Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. I am Joe Brown. I am joined by Brendan Lewis, the undefeated Brendan Lewis. How's it feel? What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? You win 100% of the games, you crit. You right? know what? <laughs> you know what I said immediately after that game is good players crit their moves. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so we are here at the Liberty Garden Midseason Showdown Day One because, mm. of course, we have mm. two midseasons, two premier challenges this weekend, all in Island, New Jersey. We sure do. Uh, and we are at round seven. This is the last round of Swiss here from our 103 player, 103 masters mm -hmm. here at the MSS. And this is going to be a doozy between James Beck and Joey Ayala. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get to the point in the tournament uh, probably a couple rounds ago, actually. I don't know when we started pulling X1 where we have players that are playing for their tournament lives. Um, and I know sometimes the resistance works out because we will have... Uh, what is it, a top 8 cut here, that an X2 does kind of sneak into the back of top 8, but you can only guarantee your spot and cut with an X1 finish. Um, and both these players sitting at X1 need to win this game to be guaranteed a shot at the 50 CP. And more importantly, some phenomenal prizes that Jet oh managed to Oh, man, we have so event. many good yeah. prizes. I saw a, uh, a more Pico plush. Did you see that one? Yeah, Jen stays undefeated with prizing. Oh, <laughs> man, it's the best. So that's, you know, the... I'm sure I'm sure these players will get enough to qualify for Worlds without mm -hmm. this weekend. They're here for the plushes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, so if we just look over as our players are getting set up, James Beck, a uh, player who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway, from this region is a multiple times world qualified champion, a multiple regional champion, an international champion, uh, top eight of the 2019 world top champion. Top four. Top four, that's right. He mm -hmm. won his top eight match on stream. He got on a Pikachu stream. trophy. Yep. Yes, top four of the 2019 uh -huh. world world championship and he's just like he's on a tear that i don't think anyone's gonna stop i mean it's tough to argue that he didn't have one of the greatest vgc seasons of all time in 2000 and he did it without a mega in a format with megas that's true yeah he was uh, he season. did lock into that one team there and then um but now that we've kind of switched formats and i think we've already seen this in a couple scenarios and not that i'm trying to you know wish uh, impart this on J uh, james necessarily but we are at a point where there are a lot of new players in the format right and we're seeing with such a, a stark format shift from Ultra back to something that's a little bit more like w the format that we had in 2017 or something like that. Different play styles, different players, different team building identities uh, flourish as opposed to Ultra, which is, again, very different than 2020. Right. I see you trying to cast your New England voodoo over... Oh, no, over no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, you, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you can see our players, uh, James and Joey. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Joey's accomplishments, but uh, one thing he did now, I don't know how this counts, Brendan, but we talked pre-show. We said, what's going to be the most popular Gigantamax we see? And if your match doesn't count, Snorlax on Joey's side is going to be the first Gigantamax of the day. Taking away point, one, point one for me. You're taking away my only accomplishment? Yes. <laughs> my, my match doesn't count anymore? So, okay. Snorlax. <laughs> I'll remember that, Joe. Uh, yeah, we do have a, a Snorlax, which uh, you would assume is Gigantamax. Uh, people were kind of kicking around at the beginning of the format that maybe we don't want to use Gigantamax Snorlax because you get to use Max Strike, which allows you to use like Tailwind Strats with Snorlax and stuff like that. But I think when the dust settled, it was pretty clear that uh, having the opportunity to replenish your berry is a little bit better than anything that uh, speed control can offer you in, in most scenarios. Um, but the curious thing about uh, Joey's team, who of course is the player that's running the Snorlax up there, is there's no Trick Room setter. So he's going to have to find some more creative ways to try and position Snorlax so that it can actually get attacks off once it's gotten its belly drum up. And potentially Thunder Wave on Grim Snarl, right? That would be a way to slow things down. Mm -hmm. uh, if you flinch everything with Air Slash on Togekiss, then you don't have to worry about their speed tiers because sure. they're never going to attack. Yeah, sure, that's certainly uh, an option. So, But, uh, you know, he's playing the mind games right there. Having Snorlax number one in his battle box, it lets James know that Snorlax is a threat. So he could pull, he could pull the option select there and not even bring it, and James will be too worried about it. It's all mental, Brendan. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into game one here. Joey Ayala and James Beck. This is round seven of the midseason showdown. The winner will guarantee themselves a slot in the top cut, uh, and the loser is going to have to hope that their resistance is good enough to get one of the last couple slots. But we'll have James leading with Durant and Melodic, and on the bottom of the screen, Joey Ayala's team of Gyarados and Togekiss, two flyers. Yeah, and I think the Milotic lead is, is definitely a good idea here. There are uh, an Arcanine and a Gyarados in team preview, so you'd immediately kind of think, 
oh, you know, the, you know, there's a good chance that there will be a, an Intimidate lead, and of course, uh, Arcanine does not want anything to do with my low deck. Uh, but not catching an Intimidator here on turn one as the first Dynamax is going to be for uh, James as that Durant goes up. Yeah, Durant, when you see it on turn one, pretty much very often it's just going to Dynamax if it's not imminently threatened by a fire attack, which unless unless Tog just goes for it with a, a heat wave, it might not be hit by one. Um, so we're actually going to get a we're going to get a double uh, we're going to get a double Dynamax on this turn. So so common in BGC 2020, and it will be the Gyarados matching the Durant, so uh, obviously he doesn't have a way of hitting Durant super effectively, where Durant potentially has max Rockfall, which will hit the Gyarados, and this Durant is unintimidated, so it would be a lot, but Togekiss is not going to let that happen, as we will have a follow me redirecting any attacks that were going towards the Gyarados, and we'll put it into the Togekiss. Uh, Togekiss eats his berry, revealing that it is a Babiri berry, and this max steel spike will come in, resistance Togekiss, and just barely enough to hang on, so that's why he uses the Babiri berry, so he can <coughs> hang on for another turn where he can follow me. And of course, we do have it at the time where Joey is on the right and James on the left. We need to flip that uh, because James is the team that has the Durant and the Melodic and Chandelure. So we will get that fixed for you momentarily. Um, there was uh, <laughs> now with the uh, Max Overgrowth coming out to the field, hitting the Melodic super effectively, but not enough for a knockout. It is enough, however, to bring it down to a round. 25% of its HP, it's going to eat that Citrus Berry to go back up to 50%. Muddy Water does connect on both of Joey's Pokemon, and that knocks out the Togekiss, so the double target is able to take Togekiss down. It will not be around next turn to follow me, so this Gyarados is threatened by a potential Max Rockfall. Yeah, I think it's almost definitely going to be taking a Max Rockfall. I think at, it gets to a point where, uh, you know, from James's side of the field, um, or I'm sorry, from Joey's side of the field, where to deal with that Durant, you have to get Arcanine in at some point, and then, you know, give that Milotic the competitive boost as a way of at least threatening Durant in some way. Um, and it is going to be this turn uh, that he's selected to do so as the Intimidate does come down. And he will be threatening, uh, likely, a Heat Wave. I think Heat Wave is kind of what you're almost forced to run as an attack on Arcanine in a lot of scenarios, uh, just because of the threat of Durant itself with Redirection, where if uh, Durant Togekiss is the lead and you want to try and use Arcanine as a way to check that. Well, you can't hit it until you, you know, use whatever six turns it takes to KO uh, a, a Togekiss with the flamethrower. Um, so we'll see. Uh, it's going to be an interesting couple of turns to see how these players play now that Arcanine has entered the equation. The thing I worry about with uh, the Melodic here is if it's even going to be able to get an attack off because it would potentially just be knocked out by another uh, Max Overgrowth. But instead, Joey actually going for Protect with that Max Guard. It will not be targeted by anything uh, from James's end if it was hit for a max rock ball, which is exactly what comes through and that's why it's beneficial sometimes to have protect um, <coughs> For when you Dynamax so that you can just take a turn of really not take of not taking any damage and wasting the Dynamax Yeah, I think that's a strong turn by Joey definitely and I think what we'll probably see now is that we know Melodic has has used its protect already is that uh, Arcanine gets to come back onto the field and regardless of the fact that it's gonna put Melodic at plus four of course, uh, Max Overgrowth will knock it out um, uh, a second time with that Life Orb boost that we saw. Um, so it looks like Joey's actually playing pretty well. Uh, the thing that, uh, you know, you think about, maybe this is his only Durant game plan, and that can be kind of concerning in that you have to try and think about outplaying a player like James Beck to be able to beat Durant, right? So this is very clearly like a multi-step process to taking this thing down, and you need something that's a little bit more consistent to be able to consistently beat a player like James with Durant in his hands. Melodic switches out here on this turn, though. It doesn't want, uh, it, it's gonna get rid of that competitive boost. Thunderbolt does half of, it, of the HP to the Togekiss, but he will be ready to follow me next turn. Max Rockfall will connect onto Gyarados. It is not enough for a knockout. This will, one. Yeah. this will set up the sand, though, so. Um, they, there's going to be a little bit of tick damage at the end of the turn. Uh, but a max airstream from Gyarados into Durant also brings it down really low, not knocking it out, but instead will give Gyarados, oh, with, thanks a to a critical hit, will give it the speed boost to be faster than the Durant next turn. So I don't know if that was a call from Joey or not, but he expected that Melodic was not going to be there, so he didn't waste a turn with the max overgrowth. Well, he targeted the slot with the Thunderbolt. It's, it's, it's likely that... Um, you know, the Duraludon would have still outsped Melodic and been able to knock it out. Uh, but definitely another turn that favored Joey there as he's 
correct in his calculations that Gyarados will be able to take the minus one Rockfall and then for its troubles get an Airstream up, which is the only way that it's now able to also threaten Durant. Otherwise, without the Airstream, uh, all things equal, Durant would have been able to attack this turn. But now it looks like Joey's got a pretty good pin as long as he's able to knock out this Togekiss, but it's not Follow Me and it doesn't matter anyway. Gyarados is now going to get the opportunity to knock out Durant. Togekiss goes down in this matchup without ever getting an attack off. Waterfall from the Gyarados into Durant will take it out cleanly. And that's kind of the problem with, you know, uh, the Durant when he has like those those buffed three turns. Once he's knocked, or once Dynamax is over, it's like, what does he do next? Now you have to risk the hustle boost or hustle misses every single turn. Right, and it's it's a, that's the hustle misses are a dicey uh, win condition to play too. Of course, you want to, you know, find a way to uh, identify a game plan that's a little bit more consistent than stalling out Durant for three turns, making it take as few KOs as possible, and then going from there. Um, but we are going to see James down to his final two Pokemon. But of course, not a bad final two Pokemon to have, as one of them. Uh, being Galarian Darmanitan does threaten a ton of damage onto just about everything. That's what he does, the, the snowman himself. Thunderbolt from Duraludon that into Melodic uh, actually shows that it did not, uh, it would not have knocked out that last time when Melodic switched out. But this Icicle Crash does connect us to the Gyarados, obviously 2 HP. It's not like it was going to live any longer because of the sand and its own life orb. Uh, but Melodic will recover this turn, negating all of that damage that the Thunderbolt just did, or most of it at least, that the Thunderbolt did from Duraludon. And now our trainers are down to their final two Pokemon, Galarian, Darmanitan, and Melodic versus Duraludon and Arcanine. And you know what, Joe? I'm actually just realizing now, and this is probably a couple turns too late, but I believe this is actually a Scarf Duraludon, because now that I'm thinking about it, it was outspeeding Durant for multiple turns. Um, and I probably should have caught that, uh, but the thing that tips me off is that basically the only item that Darmanitan runs in this format is Choice Scarf to allow it to outspeed stuff like Dragapult and knock it out. Even when Dynamax, there's a good roll for that. Uh, but I see Duraludon outspeed Darmanitan, and my first thought is uh, Scarf Duraludon instead of, um, I wonder if that's something else on Darmanitan. But yes, it is Scarf Duraludon, not an item that we typically see on cool it. That's a pretty cool tech, honestly. Um, yeah, it tends to run something like Weakness Policy or, or Life Orb or Assault Vest, but Choice Scarf, definitely an interesting selection as Helping Hand from Arcanine is going to come out So here. can this Helping Hand Thunderbolt knock out Melodic? Melodic's at higher HP than it was the last turn. It's no, it there. is not enough for a knockout. Also, doesn't seem like it got a uh, paralysis or anything like that. So Icicle Crash does connect. Again, it is a 90 accuracy move, so it's something you always have to be worried about when you're running Darmanitan. Ice Beam from Melodic with the competitive boost will hit that Duraludon and knock it out. The so double target of, you know, double ice attacks into that will take it down. And now it is Arcanine against two Pokemon. Uh, Arcanine would be able to handle the, the Darmanitan, especially since it's locked into Icicle Crash, so he has to take care of this Melodic. Yeah, if he's able to take care of Melodic, I think that... Uh, Joey might be able to seal this one, uh, you know, barring something like a, a series of Icicle Crash crits, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Oh, flinches, he avoids though. But he's actually just going to dodge it and get the Flamethrower into the Milotic. I thought that was into the Darmanitan oh, for a second. Oh, that would have been really... Like, no, 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 wrong side. I was say, that would have been really scary if it yeah. either one went to Darmanitan or two Flamethrower didn't knock out. I know Melodic was super low, but like, yeah. you know, it is resistant. Melodic's a special defense Well, piece, he just so. needed the one water type attack to, to, to fire off for... Um, uh, right, to, so to if he got an Ice School Crash flinch, though, and Melodic with the competitive boost, Muddy Water connects, like, that could have changed. Oh, that could have changed things. So sure. James might be a and little... there's one flinch. One, a flinch to turn too late there on, on James's end because now he can... If he ever breaks through Ice School Crash flinches, he can just go for the flamethrower and yeah. knock and out the It's going to take stuff. a pretty extensive series of flinches for this to, to happen here. Um, oh, even with the barrier, yeah. yeah. So that shows that he's the uh, Citrus Berry, which actually actually helped him out massively there compared to one of the Pinch Berries. Um, a flamethrower does connect, oh, taking enough. down Darmanitan. That was a really close first game. That was back and forth for you know, at least eight or nine turns, which is uh, kind of long sometimes in 2020. Yeah, definitely. And I think Joey played a lot of his uh, early to mid game really well. Um, you know, doing what he needed to do uh, to take care of Durant, even though it looked like he didn't necessarily have all the tools that a lot of teams are carrying to deal with Durant. We saw, you know, the flamethrower on Arcanine, where if he had something like Heat Wave, that would have been a lot easier to try and deal with it. You know, something like making uh, Intimidate on Gyarados as well, which while that's definitely dicey against Melodic, it gives you, um, you know, more tools to deal with Durant. Uh, but he was able to play well enough to get himself into at least a position to win. Um, but like I mentioned during the game, like relying on yourself as a player to be confident 
constantly outplaying a top four Worlds finisher as your way of winning the game, maybe not the best. But of course, he's got a lot of Pokemon on his team. He can try and default back to that Snorlax mode like you've been talking about, Joe. Snorlax gets a fire move. They can hit there Durant. He gets a lot of moves. Have um, you ever seen me use Darkest Lariat? It's hilarious. He's been, yeah. It's uh, hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying he's going to bring Snorlax. I just think, yeah, it'd, I be, think it'd be I th interesting. I it think is it's tough a tough since bring. he doesn't have a Trick Room setter. I do, I do here. wonder yeah. what the matchup precisely is for for Snorlax here. But mm -hmm. uh, with the or potential reveal of Choice Scarf Duraludon, what is something that James can do to counter that? Because he has a Thunderbolt. He has... You know, Flash Cannon to hit Togekiss. He has all these moves of potential. Choice Scarf, Flash Cannon into Togekiss, or Draco Meteor into the opposing Duraludon. Like, what's the counter to, to a Scarf Duraludon? Well, I think I think the, the counter to it is just the fact that when you put a Choice Scarf on a Pokemon like Duraludon, you're taking away the option to run something else. I think that, you know, being able to buff some of its offensive power, so it making sure that it's taking the KOs, buff its very weak special defense, are four more, far more important things to be doing with your item slot than, than buffing its speed. And um, based on the fact that it was also outspeeding uh, Darmanitan, that means that it's also timid. So you're taking away quite a bit of power uh, that could be available right. to Duraludon because by making sure that it's outspeeding. Too. So, you know, obviously, Duraludon has to be timid to be faster than uh, the Gyarados. Did. Right, so the fact that you're investing so heavily in the speed, I think that's the counter to itself in a lot of senses, is that you're opening more holes up that you're patching for, for Duraludon as its item choice. Well, we do have double Togekiss out here. The same lead from Joey from Game 1 is now here in Game 2, with Gyarados and Togekiss just swap sides. And Duraludon Togekiss is the lead for James here on the top of the screen. Yeah, I think uh, Duraludon into Gyarados is pretty favorable for James. They tend to run Thunderbolt. Not all of them do, but I think Thunderbolt is probably the most common third move here. And uh, Joey is privy to that. It's going to go back in favor of Arcanine to try and handle that Duraludon a little bit better. Yeah, the Arcanine will intimidate both of James's Pokemon, but uh, unless there's a, a random physical attack on Duraludon, I wouldn't expect it to matter. Uh, but James is going to Dynamax this turn. <coughs> Excuse me, both of the Pokemon are actually viable options, and he actually decides that Duraludon is his Dynamax of choice in game two. Uh, so, obviously, maybe he's not Choice Scarf. Maybe he's one of the more conventional uh, items on his Duraludon since we didn't see it in game one. Could be Salt Vest, could be, you know, Lumberry or Life Orb or whatever he wants to go for. Uh, but a Protect from Joey's Togekiss on this turn will make sure that it, it at least endures a, a Max Steel Spike. I know he went for Max Lightning, so James wasn't expecting the, Gar the Gyarados to switch out. It's still a pretty strong attack into the Arcanine, uh, bringing it down for, to under half of its HP, I believe I saw. Or just, just, just right over, around. Yeah. Yep, sorry about that. But, uh, enough but with now, the boost, now that yeah. Electric Terrain is on the field, this following Max Lightning will be able to knock out the knock out the Arcanine. Unless the Arcanine also had Snarl, maybe? We saw it's a special attacker. Uh, I, I think Snarl is like the best, the, right? like the reason to run Arcanine. At right, this so point. that... Maybe would, not the reason, Ar since but... Since Arcanine is faster than Drowdon, that would be a way to lower its special attack, right. ignoring Togekiss's Follow Me as well. Yeah, I think that's definitely what you're doing here, is your plan, as uh, if you're Joey here, has to be to just throw down a bunch of Snarls and try and get through James's Dynamax turn so that you can come in a couple turns later and be threatening more offense with your own Dynamax user. Helping hand from James onto his Duraludon. This will essentially counteract the Snarl, because uh, Snarl is going to lower his special attack by one stage, both of these Pokemon. Max Lightning in the terrain with the helping hand, but a Snarl decrease will go down to the Duraludon, a resistant attack, but it does do 50% of the damage there. So uh, it was all, maybe he was also targeting down that Togekiss for the switch. All right, and that exact sort of situation is, is what I was kind of talking about with where you opt for something like a Choice Scarf instead of an Assault Vest or some sort of offensive item, you take over half from a Max Lightning even though you're resisting it. <coughs> Melodic will switch in though for the Togekiss slot. He decides, James decides he doesn't want to help him hand that turn, doesn't want to risk taking a Thunderbolt. On, uh, from Joey and so Melodic also doesn't want to take Thunderbolt though so Joey went for an electric attack in that slot with the electric terrain it is going to hurt but like said his Duraludon will Dynamax at half HP so this is really dangerous because your Duraludon loses the Choice Scarf when you Dynamax so you might not 
You might not be faster than uh, the rest of James's Pokemon, especially if he has Durant in the back. Right. But a double Snarl here will lower the special attack again on Duraludon, actually increasing Melodic special attack because it's competitive. Lowers it by one, increases it by two. Max Wormwind into Duraludon is not enough for the knockout. Brings it down to around 25% of its HP, lowering the attack. Uh, a Melodic so it increases its special attack again. That's another reason Melodic is so strong in this format because of the special effects that lower stats and boost it competitively. And then Max Wormwind from James and Duraludon, but at minus two, it's really not doing much. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very curious turn by Joey. I think you can see in a couple of respects what he was going for. I think maybe he was trying to get a little bit of chip damage down from Snarl and feel like he's getting himself into position uh, to knock out James's Duraludon with uh, with a Max Wormwind. But instead what he did is he put a Snarl and a Max Wormwind down and Nymelodic is at plus three. Um, <laughs> with nothing on the field that can, you know, very easily deal with it, barring something like a Max Lightning. And even that's not going to be enough to knock out uh, um, the Melodic at this. It's, Especially it's a, through the Protect. It's a tenuous so. position. Right. <laughs> James making the smart call to Protect on Melodic this turn because he knows this is Joey's final turn of Dynamax. So he's going to take a quarter of the damage that he would have um, it seems like Melodic still would have endured that hit. Definitely, through, yeah. Uh, even without the Protect, but still smart to keep the Melodic very healthy. Right. Because it has, this is a potential, Melodic's usually a supportive Pokemon, or helps you out a little bit, but there's potential for Melodic to sweep with these boosts. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, there's a potential for just about every Pokemon in the decks to sweep at plus three, and obviously my Lotus gets a little, gets there a little more uh, safely and easily than most Pokemon do, but it is definitely a threat whether or not it's running. I'm not sure if we saw a Muddy Water last year. We did, we did. Yeah, yeah. we did, because he uh, double connected on it. Right, and that, that's really scary, you know. Uh, spread moves like that, I talked this with a notion a little bit about this earlier, is that with Togekiss being such a prevalent Pokemon, using spread moves is a really good way to generate offense. Um, you don't have to deal with follow me, and, and that's definitely going to factor in here. Even with Togekiss in the back, this Muddy Water is going to be very, very threatening uh, to a lot of the Pokemon on Joey's team. And he's not even going to wait for his last turn of Dynamax here. He's going to withdraw Duraludon, deciding that he needs it for later. Togekiss will switch into that slot. As Melodic switches again, I think Melodic might be unaware of uh, how much power it has under it by getting rid of these competitive boots. An Earthquake, though, uh, from the from the Darmanitan will hit the Arcanine super effectively, knocking it out. Obviously, the two Togekiss avoid it, but Arcanine goes down here, and James is up uh, three, or we're actually tied three Pokemon to three right now. We know who the three are that are remaining. Yeah, and James tried to go for the death blow there. That's what he was going for, was taking out two knockouts with that Earthquake, you know, knowing that... Um, the likelihood was that the Duraludon that was on the field at the time was going to go for something like a Max Lightning into Melodic. He would get the opportunity to switch, go for an Earthquake, take two knockouts, but instead Joey is one step ahead there and does get a Flying type in while preserving his Duraludon. Um, and now uh, James is locked into Earthquake with two yeah. Flying types on the if, field. If James so would ever like to attack James, again, James he has really to gave him like an opening that I don't think he necessarily needed to give him there. <laughs> <laughs> Melodic. Yeah, obviously forced to switch into the Galarian Darmanitan slot. Oh, and he powered with the and, switch. And Joey knows it. Joey knew the switch was coming. That's what the power whip does. It connects and hits the Melodic, knocking it out, giving Gyarados the Moxie boost. Now it has uh, plus one in its attack, which makes it even scarier with that life form. Single target Dazzling Gleam from Togi or excuse me, that was the that was James's Togekiss that went first. Uh, this is Joey's Togekiss will hit with the air slash. Of course, not going to flinch since it was it was the last to go this turn. But I mean, if we saw the switch coming a mile away, Joey's sitting here at five and one in the last round of switch. He's a good enough player to know that that melodic was coming in. Yeah, he was ready to go with that one, and I think this is still even a pretty pretty good position for Darmanitan, especially uh, if it does get access to Rock Slide. But it seemed kind of like, you know, with that turn that we talked uh, about with um, uh, going for the KO onto Darmanitan and missing it, uh, that Joey had kind of sealed his own fate with that turn. And I think that Earthquake play, while it would have been really cool to actually see it happen, was James reaching a little bit farther than he needed to. Um, and it looks like it let Joey back into the game here. Uh, but a pair of follow me is, it's, if, if this is a rock slide, this is going to be a, a big one, but no rock slide. These Toad Kiss, they're such divas. They just want all the attention. Follow me, redirect all the attacks. Icicle Crash connecting, knocking out Joey's Toad Kiss. So now the question is, what is this Moxie boosted Gyarados going to do? He's going to hit the Toad Kiss with a waterfall, which is not enough to knock it out. Even with the Life Orb Moxie boost, 
So now this Togekiss is free to follow me again as Darmanitan goes for the neutral, uh, uh, goes for that neutral uh, icicle crash into either of, Gar of Gyarados or Duraludon. The question is, does James connect? Well, I, I think this is also a tall task because Duraldon is still and faster. And he's scarfed. That's yeah, right, Duraldon scarfed. scarfed. So now this Dar Darmanton's not even going to get an attack off that flash cannon. The players shake hands. James is down to just his Togekiss here. He understands. It looks like Scarf Duraldon was the call at this MSS. Maybe it was. So I'll go he, eat and my Joey hat. Ayala is going to win this set and win his way into Top Cut at the Liberty Garden Saturday midseason showdown. Yeah, he made some nice plays there. Uh, it, it looked a little dicey in the mid game, but I think he was able to pull it back with, you know, James maybe gave him an inch and he was able to take a lot more, um, give, giving him the opportunity to make plays like power whipping the switch in and stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, it's a little bit easier to make reads like that, of course, when you're up a game and you've got a little bit of, you know, uh, wiggle room to play with over the rest of the set. But he definitely took full advantage of that and played really well. And, uh, you know, being that this is potentially a, a pretty new player here, that's a huge win as to take a, a victory over James Beck in a win and in game. Having been on the losing side of a win and in against James Beck before, I can tell you that doesn't <laughs> feel good. So I imagine that this is a, a good one for Joey. No, congratulations to him. Yeah. But in fact, uh, Joey and Brendan are both undefeated on stream today. So <laughs> you know, you're both having a good day here in, uh, in New Jersey. So uh, congratulations to Joey. Of course, James, I'm sure he's run the gambit against his opponents in this switch, so he probably has a nice resistance. There could be a chance, potentially, that he makes it into top cut, right, as mm -hmm. maybe there might be one 5-2 and two player. There's a possibility, the yeah. Right, so uh, the day is potentially not over for James. Of course, the day is not over here at all for us at Liberty Garden because we have all of the top cut to present to you uh, as well as a premiere challenge. I don't know if you heard, there's going to be a premiere challenge later on after uh, after the MSS ends, so mm -hmm. that's going to be exciting. And then we're going to do it all again tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we are. So uh, we are going to take a quick break and get an uh, interview with our winner, Joey, from that round. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned on Liberty Garden. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Maeve O'Rourke, and I am here with Joey Ayala. Joey, just like last round, <laughs> this is your first tournament. This is my first VGC, live VGC tournament. Which is crazy <laughs> to me. You know, you've, and you just beat somebody who is well-renowned as a player. I know. I was, like, so worried because I was like, great, of course the fact I have to get to top cut as <laughs> a seasoned veteran. And I'm like, okay, I guess this is how it's going to go. Yeah. Um, I think my first question that I want to ask and I think almost everyone wanna, wants to ask, are you running Choice Scarf Duraludon? I am running Choice Scarf Duraludon. Tell me about that a little bit, please. So I looked at my team. I wanted a good balance. It's like a balance where I can operate under Shirk Room with like Snorlax, but I still wanted to have like a speed control that outspeeds like the top dog, which is Dragapult. Dra Scarf Duraludon outspeeds Dragapult by like really? five, by five points. Oh my god. So goodness. when I did, I was like, what should I add to this team? And I saw Duraludon and I was like, I mean, I, I was thinking of Assault Vest first and then 
I was like playing, I was like, wow, this seems slow. And I saw a choice scarf and I was like, does this outspeed? And it did. So I knew in the end it had to be my win. Khan had outspeed everything on his team. I knew that around the, the Darmanitan was choice banned, so I was like, that's safe. The Darmanitan couldn't, I mean, also it could have been choice scarf, but Adamant instead of Jolly. Yeah. Like a lot of options there, but uh -huh. we were all very shocked when we saw that you outsped, able to get a, <laughs> you know, a steel type move off or anything like that into the. Uh, Darmanitan there. One thing I want to ask too, when you see a team like his, which typically is super hyper offense, mm. you've got something like Durant Milotic is a really common lead. What do you, what is your kind of go-to tactic with that? How do you, how do you feel like you best handle that as a player and with your team? Well, I know the team actually has a lot of problem with the hustle <laughs> Pokemon. So right. like uh, Dr uh, Durant, uh, Dracozolt, Dracos was probably the biggest problem to the team. But I knew overall, I felt like I had pretty, like a good solid matchup spread. So when I see Pokemon like Durant, my first option automatically is just Arcanine, but then I saw, I knew he was going to pair it with Milotic, so I was like, alright, that's definitely not the way we're going to go. So, I knew right away that if, like game one and two, or game one, if my Gyarados got one speed boost, I would definitely outspeed the Durant, because I know it outspeeds Dragapult after one, two. So, I was like, if I get that boost right away, then Durant's pretty frail, it's like a glass cannon, even with Dynamax. So, I knew once I get this speed boost, I'll be able to just not really worry about this Durant. And pairing it with Togekiss, I knew I would be able to get at least one clean hit off on Durant with Gyarados without taking any major damage. And unless he went for like max Rockfall, I knew Togekiss would at least be able to tank one with the Babiri Berry and just how I trained it. So from there, once the I saw once the Durant was gone, I didn't really see much of an option for Gyarados for on his team. So I was like, okay, I'll just keep Gyarados around. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that power whip from that Gyarados too, especially in game two, really proved advantageous for you when you obviously a very obvious switch in, you, you know, Darmanitan, <laughs> of course, choiced into something yeah. using that earthquake and then you sending out two flying types. Yeah, it was field. more of an option that I knew uh, about the gorilla tactics ability right. that locks, his, locks him into one move. So I was like, okay. And at first, I thought he wasn't going to switch just to bait it. Like, I feel like he was just going to click Earthquake just to keep it in. And I was like, well, it was rather going to be that or he was going to click Follow Me to let uh, my load get into free. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. It's going to be damage no matter what happens. And I just got the play right. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, too, as well, for game one, when you were... Um you know, you're looking at a Pokemon like Milotic that can be really tanky. Mm -hmm. With your, po I mean, if you, for you, how important was it to keep, you know, keep your Gyarados alive, you know, after the Dynamax and still trying to keep it alive and boosted and healthy? Once I saw how much damage I did to the Milotic with the plus one um, max overgrowth, I was like, okay, Gyarados is going to be really good this game. And like, I know even with some boosts, um... Even like, I mean, my load is really tanky, but I feel like if you really overwhelm it, it gets hard to like situate it. And I thought at the end of game one where, um, I forgot what I clicked, but he clicked recover at the end. I thought that was it. I was like, oh, the Milotic. I think because I intimidated you, it. You had it, gone for a Thunderbolt, I believe, into yeah, it. Okay, because I remember I intimidated it. was at plus two. It had plus one defense from the Steel Spike before, and I was like, oh, great. This is over. Yeah, and and there then, were a couple of switches from him where he lost his competitive. Yeah, piece. I was yeah. like, okay, that in game too when he was he was like plus he was four, plus, plus he would have been plus four. three because you had an, yeah That's you had right, snarled yeah. him and then he boosted yeah up and his, i was like yeah. oh my god i mean he swapped out i was like that pretty much was over if he gave it like one more boost with like a he had a max move then it would have been over but like <laughs> i was fine playing around with it because i already had one game up so i was like if this my lodic stays in i'm gonna just learn and just download information on how to deal with it from now all right um a couple of quick things before we wrap up yeah how did you go about building this team anybody you want to shout out anybody um, uh, you worked with Definitely. Well, I built a team myself, but really? I, I definitely. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All these new players building teams themselves. I am, I am amazed. All right. Anyway, go on. <laughs> I, saw Snor I saw Snorlax, and I was like, "All right, this team's cool." Snorlax is the main point of the team, but I didn't even use it this game. So, um, Jordy as a rally, he definitely helped me. Uh, oh really? Uh, practice with it. He was because like this is like my first live VGC season, so he was helping me just get in the mindset correctly. Because like. I always had the tendency of just like hit what's in front of me. So like if they switch and it's like, oh, then I'm going to It's like click the super effective yeah, button. Right. Or, you know, those, really, those rough habits in the beginning. <laughs> of course, Jody, for those of you who may not know, he was a finalist in 2014 14. against uh, uh, Sage and Park, 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 which is <laughs> a, can, a really, really historical match for anybody yeah. who's been following UGC for a <laughs> long still, time. He's such a, such a smart person. Yeah, a and great then, New York local as well. And we then really my friend it. Robert Bosk, he's in Florida. He's been someone I've been playing on and off with. 
that online friend that I met. And yeah, he's been doing a lot of sets with me just to practice. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we are going to wrap it up. This is the end of our Swiss round. So we are going to be having a Top Cut announcement. We'll be going through the bracket showing you who is in Top Cut. Uh, and then after that, we'll be bringing you a top eight game, both top four games and finals. So uh, we'll be right back with that announcement. Sit tight. <laughs>